If you can master the AFM software and feel really comfortable using it in your exam, you stand such a good chance of passing this exam. My name's Andrew Ma, I'm your AFM expert tutor. In this video, I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the ACCA software and give you some really insightful tips and tricks as to how to make the most of it. If you need help passing AFM, check out my other videos on YouTube. I also offer my own courses, so feel free to get in touch if you need help passing AFM. So let's get into that software. Right, for this demonstration, I'm gonna use the September 2022 AFM exam. This is available on ACCA's practice platform with loads of other past exams and marks and practice exams. So it's a really good resource on there. So this is exactly how the software will look. By the time you got to AFM, you've probably encountered this software a few times before, but here's a reminder for some of you. So you've got all of your exhibits on the left here, and you can zoom in. If that's a little bit small, you can play around with it. Another great feature when you're reading the exhibits is you can highlight certain things. So you select the text and then hit highlight, and you can even do different colors. So I often recommend to my students, if there's an assumption, look at the bottom there, Power fuels cost of capital has been estimated at 12%. Maybe you could highlight assumptions, things you're skeptical about in a different color. So maybe we go with blue for assumptions or something. So there are a few things you can do around highlighting, which I like. Obviously, this isn't gonna get marked. This isn't an exam on how pretty you can make the exam exhibits look. So don't go mad, don't highlight every word a different color, but it may be useful for you to do that. You've got the requirements, now that's where I always start. Those of you who've watched my other videos will know my technique is always to start with the requirements. Remember, you can also highlight the requirements if necessary. So if you wanna pick out bits of those requirements, you can. Now for the important stuff, you've got your word processor. So this is where you write your written answers. So you can type in there. And again, you can resize that, you can move it around the screen, which is quite handy. So you can have open your requirements on the left, and then you can have your word processor on the right as well. So you can change that around if you want to. Now within the word processor, there's no spell check, but you can do things like bold and underline. So I always like subheadings to be bold and underlined in there. Um, you can copy and paste as well. So you can cut and paste within that. So you can copy and paste from the requirements into your answer, you know. So if I just click Control C and then do a Control V there, that's quite nice maybe to set up your headings. Again, I quite like sort of paraphrasing them, making them a little bit more condensed than that, but it's not a bad idea. And then you can get going with your structure. So again, you've got a few things on there which are quite nice. And again, I would really spend a bit of time just playing around with that and just going uh, used to how it works. So that's your word processor. Again, that's just like a fairly standard word processor. For your calculations, you wanna do all of your calculations in the spreadsheet. So I wouldn't do any at all on a manual calculator. That's a really important tip for AFM. Don't do calculations in a manual calculator and then just type them in. So if I'm doing a quick calculation and I just put my answer as 35, that's the value of equity or something, for example, there, the markers have got no idea where I've got that number from if I've done it just in my calculator. Whereas if I show, oh, actually it's $3.50 per share, they've got 10 million shares, like so, they can then see that working. So they can see what you've done behind the scenes. So it's always good just to do it in the software. It's also much quicker, so don't do anything on a manual calculator. So that's your spreadsheet. So you've got all this for your calculations. Again, you can have that open, you can move it around, you could have your exhibits open at the same time if you want to, so you can really juggle the screens exactly how you want to, which is, which is great. Now, a couple of the little tips on the spreadsheet. Now imagine that we're doing a sales calculation. So we're trying to work out our sales. I put in demand, I put in the price per unit and I put in sales. Now demand is inflating by 5% each year. So I'm just doing that times 1.05 and the price per unit is $2.50 and then I'm just inflating that by 7% each year, just to give it a quick example. Now in terms of the rounding in AFM, when we're looking at rounding, as you can see here, it's all a little bit inconsistent, isn't it? When we're doing something like price per unit, what you can do is select those so they're the two zeros at the top there and then hit that third one down and that will do it all to two decimal places. Now it doesn't matter too much if you don't, but it does look a lot neater. Equally on that top row, we've got some that are to the nearest unit, some that are 0.25 of a unit and so on. I love the fourth one down for something like that, especially the bigger numbers, because that makes it the nearest whole number, but also puts a comma in between the thousands. So that's really neat and very easy to mark now, which is great. 
So to work out sales, I'm then just going to do demand times by the price. Now, obviously, there's no demand in year zero. So we can just do that and it'll be zero. Then I can just drag that across. And again, I can just hit that. And there we go. We've got our sales. So my next tip in the software. Imagine that we've done a working for some sales, for example, and we've got our sales figures here and we need to put those into our MPV. Now, as you can see, I've worked those out by doing that times that. So if I just copy these and paste them in here, this is my big MPV, I want to put my sales in here, I get some weird answers. They're not the numbers, are they? Now, the reason for that is it's copied the formulae rather than copying the numbers. So we are doing the numbers above multiplied by each other like I did in the working down here. Now, that isn't okay, is it? Now, that's not going to be great for your marks. So you've got two options. Now, what some students do is they do paste values so you can copy and paste values. But the easier way is just to go equals and select the first one that you want, which is that, and then drag that across. That then references those cells below and pulls them through. So you can see these are now here. So just do equals that first cell and drag it across. The other great thing about that is if you realize you made a mistake, whoops, that wasn't meant to be 10,000, it was meant to be 100,000, it will then change this and look, it's already changed our MPV as well. So there's a really nice little trick in the software just to make sure you're pulling through the right numbers and not typing them out manually. That's something I heard recently. Someone was just typing them out one by one. Again, much, much quicker to reference those cells. Another tip in the software is the discount factors. So let's say we wanted to discount these at 10%. Now, you can use the equals MPV function, which I'm a big fan of. I've done a video on MPVs, so check that one out if you need to know how to use that. But it might be that you want to use the discount factors individually. Maybe there's a perpetuity at the end or maybe you're doing duration. So the discount factors you can find in the formula sheet. So if you click on that button at the bottom and then go to the formula sheet, you get all of these formulae here. And again, you can check these out in the software to see which ones you get given. So you get all of these in here. Then you also get your present value table. So the 10% discount factors are on the right there. And then it's each year. So it starts off with 0 0.909, 826, 751, 683, 61, etc. So we could just copy those down, but I am not a massive fan of that. I'm going to show you a quick trick. Now, just while we've got this open, here are the annuity factors as well on the next one, which are, remember, that's if it's for several years. So you're getting the same cash flow for a set time period. So my little trick for the discount factors, if you do equals one plus the rate, which in this one is 10%, and do to the power of, now on most laptops that's shift six, minus the year. So that's the little formula you need. One plus the rate to the power of minus the year. Now I've selected the year from the top there. That will give us one, which is always the case in that year. And if I drag those across, that now has filled them in for us. So can you see year one, there's our discount factor. Year two, that's that discount factor. Year three, that's that discount factor. Now that ties in perfectly with the numbers I just showed you in the tables, 0 0.909, 0 0.826, 0 0.751. So that's just a really quick way of doing that. The other benefit of that is if the discount rate is 10.5% or something, that isn't in the formula sheet. Look, it's only whole numbers that we're looking at when we're doing these, and it only goes up to 15 years. So there's an added benefit of doing it this way as well, rather than using the tables. Brilliant. So that's it in terms of the software and the spreadsheets specifically so lots of little tips in there to help you get on with those the last thing i wanted to point out and the reason i show you this exam in particular is the bsop calculator which is there on the left now that will only appear in your afm exam if you need it okay so if i open it up as and when i need it so the bsop calculator it will look like this and you've got all these inputs so five things you need to type in here and then it's got these outputs. Now you don't need to change these. In fact, look, if I do try and change them, it will say they are locked, so you can't change anything. And even if I type something in here, it will say, no, you can't. The only things you can change are in this row three. So PA is the price of the assets, uh, let's say that's six. PE is the exercise price, let's say that's 650. R is your risk-free rate. Now that says a decimal, but you can type it in as a percentage and it'll do it for you. T is the time and the number of years, let's say it's four years. And S is your volatility. So let's say that's 25%. Again, you can put 0.25. And there we go. It will then automatically fill in 
And you are usually looking at either the value of the call, which will be that one, or the value of a put, which will be this one. Now, the examiners do like it if you then highlight which one you are using. So you might just want to say, right, I'm going to use that. We then use that in other calculations, which you do in the spreadsheet, and you discuss it, which you do in the word processor. So you can then use these elsewhere. Again, you can't do any further calculations in this. You'll get the credit for that. And then you use that number elsewhere. But again, it's good to point out which number you think is relevant, the call or the put, the C or the P. Or if you're doing some sort of delta hedging, you might need these as well. And there we go. That is it for the software. Lots of great features in here and lots of things to look out for. Again, get practicing. You can access this and the blank software as well just to practice any question on ACCA's practice platform, which is absolutely great. So make sure you go and practice. And as soon as you're confident with this, your exam will be so much smoother. And that's it. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more videos like this, then subscribe on YouTube. You can also follow me on LinkedIn for more exam advice and check me out on socials. I also have my own course helping students to pass their exams. Thanks for watching.